Amazon Simple Storage Service, S3, is an object storage service that offers industry-leading scalability, data availability, security, and performance. In this demonstration, we're going to learn how to create and configure a bucket, which Amazon S3 uses to store objects. Objects are files and any metadata that describes those files. We will learn how to upload, view, organize, and delete objects. And finally, delete the bucket when we're finished. These basic operations will show how simple it is to get started with S3 and serve as a foundation to learn the advanced features that are also available. To get started, let's open the AWS Management Console, navigate to S3, then select Create Bucket. Let's name the bucket Getting Started S3 Demonstration. S3 bucket names must be globally unique, so a generic name like Demo would be rejected as already being in use. There are a few other rules about how buckets can be named. Please consult the S3 documentation to learn more. We generally want to select the region that is geographically closest to where our clients who will be accessing the data are located. We will use US East, Northern Virginia for this demo. In the Object Ownership section, we recommend accepting the ACL's disabled default setting. This ensures that you, as the bucket owner, automatically own and have full control over every object in the bucket. We strongly recommend leaving the Block All Public Access setting turned on. Enabling public access should only be done as a last resort for use cases where it's absolutely necessary. Bucket versioning is a means of keeping multiple variants of an object in the same bucket, which can be used to easily recover from both unintended user actions and application failures. For the sake of this demonstration, we will leave versioning disabled. Tags are an optional setting that can be used to help you organize your buckets and track storage costs. S3 automatically applies server-side encryption. This means that all object uploads to S3 are encrypted at no additional cost and with no impact on performance. Encryption doesn't change the way you access your data as an authorized user. It only further protects your data. You can select the default Amazon S3 managed keys or a specific encryption key if you're utilizing the AWS Key Management Service. Under the Advanced Settings, we see Object Lock. This feature prevents objects from being deleted or overwritten for a fixed amount of time or indefinitely. This can help meet regulatory requirements or simply add another layer of data protection. For this demo, let's leave object lock disabled. To finish, we select Create Bucket. The bucket was successfully created. Let's click on the name and take a look inside. Amazon S3 is a powerful, feature-rich service. From within the bucket, you can review and modify some of the initial settings, such as versioning, encryption, and security permissions. You can also configure lifecycle rules, replication, and access points, among many other features. Once you have the basics down, we encourage you to explore the S3 documentation to learn more about these capabilities. Let's upload some files to our new bucket by selecting the Upload button. We then select Add Files, choose the desired files from our workstation, and select Open. If we needed to upload a large number of files, we could also use the AWS Command Line Interface or AWS Software Development Kit to do so. Since we have disabled access control lists, there's nothing to configure on the permissions dropdown. Access to objects will be granted through IAM policies, S3 bucket policies, or access point policies. Under the Properties tab, we can select the S3 storage class. You choose the storage class depending on your use case scenario and performance access requirements. For this demonstration, let's select Intelligent Tiering, which is designed to optimize storage costs by automatically moving data to the most cost-effective tier. We'll accept the default settings for server-side encryption. By default, S3 will use MD5 checksums to verify data integrity. You can also use additional CRC or SHA checksum functions if you prefer. You have the option of using tags to help categorize objects. Examples of tagging may include department name, project number, cost center, and many others. Lastly, there is also an option to add metadata to the objects.
Having reviewed all the settings, let's select Upload. The objects were successfully uploaded. We then select Close. We can now see the objects listed in the bucket and select an object to view the details. Notice that our object has a URL associated with it. However, since we have disabled public access to our bucket, we are not able to view the object from this link. In order to access the object, we can use the Open or Download buttons. Amazon S3 has a flat structure, instead of a hierarchy like you would see in a file system. However, for the sake of organizational simplicity, S3 allows naming prefixes, which simulate the concept of folders. To utilize this feature, select Create Folder. We will name the folder Images and select Create Folder. The folder was created. We can now move our objects into the folder by selecting them, clicking the Actions drop-down menu, and selecting Move. We then select Browse S3, navigate to the folder that we created, select Choose Destination, and then Move. The objects were successfully moved. Select Close to continue. The objects have been moved into the folder. Note that when we view the details of an object, the URL has been appended with a prefix that represents the name of the folder. Our last step is to delete our demonstration bucket. You may expect that we would simply select the bucket, then the Delete button. However, we will receive an error that the bucket cannot be deleted because it is not empty. To remedy this, we select the bucket, then Empty. Type Permanently Delete in the dialog box, then select Empty. We have successfully emptied the bucket. Select Exit to continue. Now that the bucket has been emptied, we can select the bucket, then Delete. Type the bucket name in the dialog box, and select Delete Bucket. The bucket has been successfully deleted. This concludes our demonstration. To learn more about Amazon S3, including how to manage access, secure your data, and optimize costs, please visit the Amazon S3 product page. Thank you for watching.